They toasted marshmallows and conversed about old memories. The campfire always brought out these kinds of conversations in the group. One weekend a year was always spent at the same campground with the same people. It made it easier to reminisce about the good old days. The fire popped and crackled between jokes and roars of laughter. The group was happy to be here together. I look forward to this trip every year, Amanda said, helping herself to another marshmallow from the bag. She skewered it with the retractable prong and held it over the fire. Within seconds, it burst into flames. It's better if you slow roast them. Get that golden brown look, Brent said as he plucked his marshmallow off the stick. It was a perfect shade of golden brown. As he stuffed it in his mouth, a look of pure satisfaction curled across his face. You've been roasting that one for the past ten minutes, Nolan said with a chuckle. I ain't got the time or patience for that shit. Nolan took his marshmallow and rammed it into the flames. When it caught fire, he pulled it out and blew it out. The force of his breath caused the treat to tumble off the stick and land in the dirt. Everyone laughed. That's why I take my time, Brent said, giving him a friendly push. You know what? Doesn't bother me, Nolan said, reaching down to pick up the marshmallow. Dirt won't kill you. Before anyone could protest, he shoved it into his mouth and swallowed it down. I'd call you disgusting, but I don't think it surprised any of us, Tracy said, and everyone laughed. The group of four sat by the flames and talked about life. They talked about what they had been up to this past year, how their lives had changed since the last camping trip, what was better and what was worse. This yearly trip was a way to stay in contact and keep an old tradition alive. Ever since they were teenagers, the four of them had taken the same camping trip, the same time of year every year. They had made a pact long ago to always come back, and each year they kept that promise. No one ever missed a year. Despite marriages and kids and jobs, the four of them kept coming back to the same spot year after year. All of them had changed since the first trip. Brent had been the jock when they were teens. He was a walking cliché, played on the football team, drove the red sports car, even picked on the nerdy kid in math class. Now, he was a middle-aged accountant at a large firm. The sports car got traded for a minivan many years ago. He no longer played sports and barely watched them anymore. His family had become bigger and more important. Nolan had been the class clown, always getting in trouble for cracking jokes when he should be studying. Everyone always thought he would pursue a career in comedy of some kind. It seemed to be his passion. But after his wife died, so did his comedic tendencies. Now, he would still crack the occasional joke and try to make others laugh, but it was different. The same passion wasn't behind it. Nolan had changed the day his wife died. Tracy loved fashion and makeup in her younger years, always keeping up with the latest trends. Tracy had been voted best dressed in the yearbook all four years of high school. She had skipped days due to bad hair or makeup. Those who knew her then would hardly recognize her now. Most days, she wore sweatpants and old t-shirts. Amanda had changed the least. She had always been the sensible one. Not one for wild parties or staying out too late. Everyone thought she would be the perfect person when she was older. The house, the kids, the husband, everything. She would settle and be a housewife and nothing more. Though these days she still didn't take risks, she was far from the husband and kids. For some reason, she never settled down. Still, she wasn't out into the late hours of the night at clubs and bars meeting men, Instead, she was in bed with a good book by ten almost every night. A twig snapped nearby and Nolan dropped his marshmallow. Oh, damn it, he called out while the others turned to see what had caused the noise. A man had emerged from the darkness and approached the campfire. His hands were raised like he was surrendering to the group. There was a crooked smile painted across his face. For almost a minute, no one spoke. The man continued to approach the campfire. Who the hell are you, pal? Brent said, a little of his old jock voice coming through. Someone who just wants to sit and talk, friend, the man said behind his southern drawl. They all exchanged looks, not sure what to think. Nolan nodded and motioned for the man to sit down. Everyone seemed to relax at this. If Nolan was approving it, then they had nothing to worry about. He had always been the one in charge of these trips, which made him sort of the group leader. If he didn't seem worried, then neither did anyone else. It's a beautiful night for a campfire. The stranger began as he sat down between Amanda and Tracy. I went camping by myself, you see, and started to get lonely out there. The woods can be a dark and creepy place, you see. And, well, I could hear you guys laughing and having all sorts of fun, and I wanted to join you. 
I hope I'm not imposing. Oh, not at all, Nolan said, pulling his next marshmallow from the fire. The more the merrier, right, guys? Everyone nodded. Forgive me, I'll... where are my manners, he said, flashing a smile. My name is Bert. Hey there, Bert, Nolan said with a mouth full. I'm Nolan, that's Trent, and on either side of you is Tracy and Amanda. They all smiled and waved, but no one said anything. It seemed everyone was waiting on edge for something to happen. Having the stranger by the fire made everyone uneasy. Well, y'all seem to be a talkative bunch, so I guess I'll explain my intentions, Bert said with a smile. You see, it's been a while since I've had any fun. He chuckled at the last word like he was privy to some inside joke. Nolan chewed his marshmallow and smiled, already preparing a second one. The others shifted nervously. And my idea of fun, the stranger continued, is different from others, which is why I don't get to have it all that often. But, seeing as we are all out here with no one else around, maybe we ought to have fun together. You talking about an orgy or something? Nolan laughed. Not at all, friend, the stranger said as he reached into his pocket and revealed a large knife. I was thinking more along the lines of a bloodbath. The stranger started to laugh maniacally, but stopped short when Nolan started to laugh too. Tracy, Amanda, and Brent all stared at him, wondering what would happen next. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Nolan started. It's just... We started to come on these camping trips years ago because all four of us have something in common. Uh, of course, back then, there were five of us. We weren't like anyone else in high school, so we started to meet in these woods to be who we truly are. The man with the knife gave a visible yawn and flicked the knife into the air to show his impatience. Nolan, however, kept his cool. The others around the fire tensed and waited for Nolan to finish. As the years went on, we kept coming out here to be ourselves until one day it all went wrong. My wife paid the ultimate price. Some asshole stabbed her right through the heart. That's when we stopped playing our little games. That's when we all grew up. Oh, so you're all like me, Bert said, smiling. Not exactly, Nolan said. He snarled like a wild dog and showed a set of pointed fangs. Waiting for this cue, the others did the same. Each person around the fire brandished a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth except for the stranger. The grin melted from his face and was replaced by absolute terror. The knife slipped from his fingers and he stood up to run. Tracy and Amanda were on him faster than lightning. Two deep bites appeared in his neck. He screamed in excruciating pain and fell to his knees. Both women gripped one of his arms in her hand. His desperate struggles were futile. Brent dashed over and placed two hands on either side of Bert's face. Tears rolled down his cheeks now as he pleaded for his life. Buddy, Nolan said as he calmly walked over, I think you chose the wrong campfire. With that, the group began to sink their teeth into his soft flesh and drank his blood until there was nothing left. His dried up husk was tossed aside like a used napkin. The four of them savored the taste of human blood, which they had not experienced in years. It felt invigorating. It was their first proper meal in ages.